So we're gonna to need to create programs in both Studio 5000 and Connected Components Workbench for this. So let's start in Studio 5000. Then we're gonna start with a new program and we're gonna be using a 1769 L16ERBB1B and we'll just call this Micro 850 Read. And if you're using one of our trainers, then typically your expansion IO will be set to zero. We've got some modules on here for some other videos. So I'm gonna set mine to four. You need to have that set correctly. If you don't put the right number here, your processor will fault when you try to go into run mode. And we're gonna create two controller tags. We're gonna create a sent to micro 800 and that will be a data type of sent or single integer and we're going to create an array of 20 of those and then we're going to create another array called dent to micro 800 and that will be a double integer type which is the default type of studio 5000 we're going to create an array of five of those and the reason why is typically when you're programming in studio 5000 you're going to be using double integers or the dent data type but when you're using messaging over ethernet ip it actually is a single integer or a sent data type so let's go ahead and download this program just as is so we can understand the need for this conversion that we're going to have to do. Now, if you need any help downloading your program, look in the description. We'll have links to a complete lesson series that goes through how to download, how to create programs, configure drivers, all those good things. And once you're done downloading, let's go ahead and go into the Connected Components Workbench software, which is the software for the Micro 820 TLC and let's create a new program and we'll just call this our logics messaging and under controllers let's go to the micro 820 and we're going to be using a 2080 lc 20 20 qwb so we'll select it and add to project and then right away let's set our ip address is it's gonna to need to be 192, 168, 113 with a subnet of 255, 255, 255, zero. Now again, let's make sure we understand this because this is the first time that we've deviated from our standard IP address we've been using these lessons. We have lessons on the Control Logics and Compact Logics PLCs for Studio 5000. And we have lessons for the Micro 820 and other Micro 800 line of PLCs for the Connected Components Workbench. But they both use the same default IP address of 192.168.110, which is what I've kept our Compact Logics PLC at. So this one has to have a different, unique IP address in order to communicate. So I've chose 13 for it. Now let's go ahead and create a program. We're going to add a ladder diagram and let's open up that program. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a timer to create a sample rate. And we've done this several times before, so I'm not going to go into the weeds of it. We're going to drag an instruction block down and we're going to use a TON timer on delay and we're going to set the preset at T number sign 100 MS and we've got a video on how timers work which includes this designation but this is going to make a 100 millisecond timer so every 100 milliseconds we're going to read data from our Control Logics or Compact Logics PLC. Then let's drag down a reverse contact, examine if open, and we're gonna look at that timer instruction that we just created. So we're gonna look at TON1 and we're gonna look at its qubit. So what this is gonna do is every 100 milliseconds, this qubit is gonna be true for one scan. So let's go ahead and bring down a new rung and this is where we're going to put our messaging program. So first let's bring down a direct contact, examine if closed, and let's look at that timer's qubit again. Then let's bring down an instruction block and just start typing MSG, which is short for message, and we're gonna be using the CIP symbolic message. So click it, 
Then just like in many of our other exercises, we're going to mouse over this to figure out most of what we need. So if we mouse over it, first we have a control config, which is going to be a data type of CIP control config. So let's click on it and let's add logics control config. And that'll be a data type of CIP control config. Then next we have a symbolic config, which is a data type of CIP symbolic config. So we'll click there and this will be logic symbolic config. And that will be a CIP symbolic config. And next we have a target config, which is a CIP target config. Click there. And we'll call this the Logix target config. That'll be a CIP target config. And then we have our data. And this is the actual data that we will be retrieving from the Compact Logics or Control Logics PLC. And it is an unsigned integer. So we're going to open this and we will select data from logics. And it's going to be an unsigned single integer. And this one we're going to add a dimension to. And we're going to add a dimension of 20. And to do that, we're going to hit one period, period, 20 in the dimension tab. And that tells it that use dimensions one through 20. And then on the output side of it, we're going to have a status and a data length. So status is CIP status. So we'll click on it and we'll call this one logics CIP status. And that will be a CIP status. And then we have a data length, which is an unsigned integer. So we'll call this one our logics data length. And it will be an unsigned integer. So that's it for our basic structure. Now there's a few of these tags that do need configured. And so let's open up our local variables. And let's open up our logic symbolic config. Let's drag this out where we can see what everything on it is. And the main two we're going to be concerned about is the symbol and the count. So the symbol is the data tag name in our control logics or compact logics PLC. So if we pop back over to this, we called it the sent to micro 800. In fact, we should just be able to highlight that and copy it. And then come over here and just paste that. Yep, it'll let us paste. And then we need bracket zero bracket. And this is going to let it know to start reading at that first data value. Let me drag that out where you can see it. And then the one right below it is the count. And we want it at 20. So what that's going to do is it's going to read sent to micro 800 zero through sent to micro 800 19. And then we're going to need to specify our target. And that is under logics target config. And we drag this on out a little bit more. Then mainly this path is the one that we're going to want. It's going to be the number four comma and the IP address of the PLC. So four comma 192.168.1.10. And that is all the configuration we need for our basic messaging instruction. Now we have a few other things that we need to work out. So don't go ahead and hit the back button and say, I've got it and go try to run do it. Let's go ahead and download this program though and see how it works. Again, same as with Studio 5000. If you need any help downloading your program or creating a new program or configuring your drivers. We have lessons on all of that. Look down in the description. Okay, make sure you switch your controller back to run mode. And all right, we're seeing a logic data length of 20. 
uh, not seeing any errors. So let's open up our data from Logix. We can just double click on it. It's going to bring up our variable monitoring and data from Logix. And right now we have all zeros because we have nothing entered in our control Logix controllers. So let's go to our Studio 5000 program and let's just put a value of 12 in and pop back over here and there you go we see 12 but we also see this zero popping in occasionally so right now it's 12 now it's 0 12 0 and this has to do with every time it goes to initiate a read it actually puts a zero back in that value so we're going to fix that in a second but there's also another problem let's go back over to studio 5000 and let's put in a value of 200 and you can see it says failed to set tag invalid string value and if we go and we try to put in 128 you're going to see the same thing until we get down to 127 and that's because this is a single integer and the largest value it's going to be able to handle is 127. So there's why we created that second tag that was double integers. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy our dent to micro 800 to our cent to micro 800. So we can use larger values. So let's go ahead and go to our main program and the main routine. And let's add a copy instruction. I'm just going to type COP. And then for our source, we're going to want our dent to micro 800 bracket zero bracket. And we're going to use a length of 20. Now this is actually a little tricky. Let's make sure we understand this length because it's going to be different when we get a connected components workbench. Is the length is determined by the destination. So I put a size of 20. That's going to be 20 single integers because there's four single integers in one double integer. So we're gonna go ahead and put that into our PLC. And now let's go back to our controller tags and go to monitor tags and look at that first double integer. And let's put in a value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. So we can put a lot bigger value into a double integer. And now if we open up our single integer one, we'll see that we have values in 0, 1, 2, and 3. So what it's done is it's broken up that double integer into these four single integers. And that's what we're going to send across to our PLC. So now let's go to our connect. So now if we look in our connected components workbench software, we're going to see values as well. Now they're still bouncing around. But one thing I want you to note is these values are not the same values that we saw in Studio 5000. We've got 210, 2, 150, and 73. If we pop back over to Studio 5000, we have negative 46, 2, 106, and 73. And now there's a couple ways to fix this, and we are actually going to do some really neat videos talking about data manipulation and how this can happen. But our bytes are swapped is the issue. So stay tuned for other videos on that. But right now, let's go back to our Connected Components Workbench software. And let's fix it along with the mysterious blanking out of the values, both at the same time. So first, let's go ahead and go offline. And let's add another rung down here. And we're going to first start by adding a direct contact examine if closed. And we are going to look at that message instruction. So right here, message CIP symbolic. And if we drag this out a little bit, you're going to find the Q. And the Q says that it has completed reading. And so each time that happens, we're going to copy that data to our double integer that we made over here at Connected Components Workbench. So we'll drag another instruction block down and type COP and that's going to be our copy instruction and for our source we are going to use the data from Logix. now we're not even going to you know you could hit the open bracket here and you could specify a specific bit we're not going to do that we're just going to use just that and then for the offset we're going to put in a value of zero 
And then for our destination, we're actually going to create a tag here and we're going to call this dents from logics. And these are going to be double integers and we're going to use one dot dot five. So that means an array of one through five. And then our destination offset will be zero. Now our length, when we were over here in Studio 5000, we put our length in as 20, but that's the destination length, and this was single integers. Well, now that we're over here and we're copying the other way, our destination is double integers. So this is going to be a length of five. And for now, let's put the swap bytes at false, just so we can understand what that does. So let's go ahead and download this and see what it does. Okay, so this is actually a really good example. You can see that the value here in our source is occasionally dropping to zero. Well, of course, now that I'm pointing that out, it doesn't want to drop to zero. There it goes, it just dropped to zero. But our destination never does. And that's because we've tied it to this Q bit right here. So each time that our message is successfully read, then it's going to update this. So if we open this up, we're going to see that we have a value of like negative 77 million or maybe that's 770 million. That's not the value that we have over in our Studio 5000. And that's because the bytes are swapped when they came across the message command. And so what we need to do is we need to put that swap bytes here at true. So if you see that you have some really crazy values, but they do change when you change the value in the PLC you're reading from, then the swap byte is probably a good idea to try out. All right, and now that we've swapped the byte, that's looking a lot closer. In fact, let's open it on up here. And yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 